Hi everyone and welcome to another cool tutorial on creativecow.net. This is Grant Swanson, visual effects supervisor of Video Apex, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to simulate several in-camera lens effects to enhance and polish your plain digital video images. Now, these can be used for virtually any type of project, including motion graphics, color grading, applying over our looks, and compositing, and I have some perfect techniques planned out for this that will give you a cutting edge advantage on your next project. Before we begin, I encourage you to watch my previous tutorial, tutorial on stabilizing shaky footage but still retaining your movement. Since we're trying to take advantage of our few DV pixels, it's key to have good camera movement, uh, which is usually smooth movement. So be sure to check out my last tutorial. Also, be sure to check out my site, videoapex.blogspot.com. Ask a question, leave a comment, and vote on the two polls I have on the right-hand side. Now as you can see, I've already got the footage open here in Adobe After Effects and I'm looking at the raw plate that came straight from the Panasonic DVX100B camcorder and is being piped in through Adobe Premiere. And now this was shot using a sort of dolly setup and the camera simply pushes in closer and then scopes up a bit to follow the actor. If I just hit the spacebar there, you can see that he walks forward and then stops to look around. Now this just helps us to get a feeling of the sense of what type of shot this is supposed to represent. Perhaps this is a part of a James Bond movie, hence the suit and the gun, so we want to try to simulate different elements to maybe add a touch of both power and sophistication. I'll just come back to the beginning of the timeline and move through here, and you'll notice that we have a few uh, basic things to take care of first. Because of the way we set up the camera, which I'll explain in a second, we are left with a very flat looking plate, slightly underexposed colors, and video noise, which in this case behaves much like film grain. When you're shooting digital video that is to be used cinematically, there are several tasks that must be completed to ensure that you are keeping a high quality image. <clears throat> First, almost every DV camcorder has an option to either increase or decrease what is called detail, which I discussed briefly in my second Sin City tutorial. Now this is a consumer feature because it can take an image and make it appear to be sharper than reality even though it is actually very low in quality. In short, detail creates dark lines around areas of bright contrast and creates light lines around areas of dark contrast, which is very difficult if not impossible to remove during post-production and leaves little room for image manipulation. So be sure to turn this detail level as far low as it can be set, which may be in negative values, depending on the camera. Second, uh, most cameras offer different gamma modes to shoot in, and depending on which one you choose, they can either increase or decrease the amount of contrast and color saturation that is created by the camera itself. You probably guessed that we also want this to be at a minimum, so that we are able to form this ourselves during post-production. Um, on the Panasonic cameras, this is called the Cinelike D mode. On other cameras, feel free to consult the manual. Third is probably the most obvious. Since we're doing our best to simulate the look and feel and style of film, we want to shoot in 24 progressive, progressive frames per second. Now most modern professional digital cameras have the option to natively shoot in 24p, but if yours does not, you still have two options for this. They are 24p and 24p A, also called 24p Advanced. The second one is the one that you want to choose as it uses an advanced pull down to create the frames. Now after setting your right balance, there is one last thing to double check. Make sure that you are not clipping any of your white values, so it's arguably best to shoot ever so slightly underexposed. Now all that was free, here's the After Effects part of it. With our raw plate material that doesn't look on like a film sequence prior to color adjustments, we need to now add our elements. So I'm going to come back over here to the beginning of the timeline and come up to the Effects and Presets panel and choose our first effect. Now we need to correct the white and black points of the image, so go ahead and type in Levels and twirl up the animation presets. There we can see is the levels effect. So I'll just drag this down here to apply it to the layer. And the first thing I'm going to do is drop the white point down to where we first start to see our color, okay? Because we want to have our brightest point in the frame set very, very close to pure white, being very careful not to clip the values so we can retain as much detail as possible. Since we went to great lengths to preserve the de detail while we shot this, it would be a great shame to throw any of that data away right now. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing to the black values, just drag up the slider to almost touching, again being very careful not to clip. Now that the black and white points are set, it would be nice to introduce some more contrast because it's still looking very flat. Now the contrast adjustment is going to be done using the curves effect, so I'll just type in C, U, R, that should do the trick, twirl up the animation presets and drag curves down here and then go in and adjust the curve. Now this is pretty cool because I'm adjusting the overall contrast but not clipping our values. In curves you're only clipping once you push up against the walls. So I'll just hit reset. So I'll just add a real simple film curve. Just drag the top part of the curve up like this and do the exact opposite with the bottom. Just drag it down. 
Now you can see that it adds a nice amount of contrast to the image, but we still retain our detail in the highlights and shadows. Now that we have the correct amount of contrast set, I want to add some more depth to this just to make it more dynamic. Now we can do this in several ways, but I'll start out by creating a sort of film glow. So just come up to the layer menu and come down to New and choose Adjustment Layer. And with the new adjustment layer selected, go ahead and come up to the Effects and Presets panel and type in Box. And twirl up the animation presets and double click on Box Blur to apply it. Before we create the glow, I'll show another trick. Set the number of iterations to 4, check Repeat Edge Pixels, and drag the radius to around 20 or so. Now if we select the layer and hit T on the keyboard to review the opacity information, we can drag the opacity down and we create a very realistic diffusion filter, which is a very nice effect. Now I don't think that it works well for this shot, so I'll just bring the transparency back up and reset the blur settings. Now to create the film glow, simply turn off the adjustment layer switch for this adjustment layer, so we're left with just a solid. This will allow us to see where the film glow is going to be. We don't want it to be located into the sky, because in doing so we would crush out some of those cloud details, and we certainly don't want that. So with the solid selected, just come up to the ma uh, select the masking tool and drag a nice large rectangular mask around the bottom half of the solid. Hit F on the keyboard, unlink the two vertical and horizontal directions, and just drag up in the vertical direction. Now wherever the solid is positioned right now, we will have a very nice film glow, and as you can see, it is very smoothly transitioning into nothing as we reach the sky there. So go ahead and turn back on the adjustment layer switch, and set its transfer mode to overlay, and instantly we increase both contrast and saturation. Why is this? Because by doing this on an adjustment layer, it's as though we've duplicated the footage and are overlaying it on top of the original, making the darks darker, the brights brighter, and the overall increase of contrast and saturation. Now at this point, I think the colors are actually too contrasted, so I'll just delete the film curve adjustment we added earlier. Um, right there. If you wish, you can even turn the blur mount back up here. I'll try around 5 or so pixels, and then we have this very nice dramatic colorized glow. All right, so now the colors are looking nice. It would be again, it would be nice to gain some of that detail in the sky back, and we can do this by simulating a lens gradient. So I'll just click anywhere on the timeline, and I come up to the layer menu, choose New, and go come down to click Solid. You can see there that the keyboard shortcut for that is Control Y. Choose to make comp size, and before we create the gradient, I'll show you another tip that you can use. Click on the color rectangle to choose a new color, and just choose a perfect 50% gray solid and an 8 bits per channel that would set the red, green, and blue values all to 128. Now go ahead and click OK, and click OK again, and if we multiply this over our footage, we are effectively creating a neutral density filter and bringing the light down by one stop. Now unless you're working with HDR imagery, this won't be much use to as a light stopping tool, but it does come in very handy in creating motion graphics and also can be used to simulate smog or haze in a compositing shot. Perhaps you're building a set extension. You can simply layer one or two of these over distant buildings or other objects in the background to create another layer of depth and realism. But we're not going to do that here. I just wanted you, you to be aware. So with the solid layer selected, turn its transfer mode back to normal. Come up here to the effects and presets panel and type in ramp. Twirl up the animation presets and double click on ramp to apply it to the layer. So come down to the effects controls panel, set the second color to be a solid white, and set the first color to be a nice warm orange color and click OK to apply that. And lastly set the transfer mode to multiply. We'll probably want to bring the uh, transparency of that down a bit though. Um, right on there should be good. Another option if we set the transfer mode to overlay and come to set the second color to a 50% gray solid and click OK, we get just a different sort of take on the gradient. I actually like this better, and we can always adjust the opacity of that too. Now that looks very nice, and you can see that we are gaining back some of those details in the sky. We could still use some more depth though, so using our new keyboard shortcut, Control y we'll create a new solid, and the color doesn't matter, just make sure it's comp size, and click OK. Double click on the ramp to apply it, again, and uh, set the ramp type to radial, reverse the two colors, set this one to white and that to black, and again, we want to set this amount, to, uh, this to the transfer mode of multiply, and probably bring the opacity of that down a bit. Around 65% should do the trick. Now, drag the start of ramp down to rest on the character, and zoom out to drag the end of ramp a bit farther away, and that gives us a very nice vignette with a lot of control. So now that's looking very beautiful. I'll show you a few more tips. 
we'll be creating a couple of cinematic transitions now. Now I've actually seen people use and try to create special presets for this that are all tied together using expressions. Same thing, same thing with the uh, gradients, but it's really unnecessary because you can create them just as well, if not better, right inside of After Effects without any special presets. So create a new solid, make sure it's comp side, make comp size and click OK. Hit home on the keyboard to come back to the beginning of the timeline. Hold on shift and hit page down twice to go out to 20 frames. Now hold on alt and hit the end square bracket to trim the layer off there. Go back to the beginning, hit T to reveal the opacity options. Click on the stopwatch to create a new keyframe. Hit O to go to that layer's out point and drag the opacity all the way down to 0%. If we scrub through there, you'll see we have a transition from white, but it's a little too washy. So if we just set this layer's transfer mode to add, we can get a nice blooming effect that blows out the layer a bit, and the solid will blend much more smoothly with the footage. Now using our keyboard shortcut, create a new solid, remember control Y, and this time make sure it is pure black, and comp size, and click OK. Hit end on the keyboard to jump to the end of the timeline, and just hold down shift, and hit page up twice to go back 20 frames. Now hold on Alt and hit the open score bracket to trim the layer's in point there. Now hit T and hit End and click on the stopwatch to set an opacity keyframe. Then hit I to go to the layer's in point and drag the opacity down to zero. And that's all there is to it. We have a very nice fade in from white and a fade out to black. Now you probably wouldn't want to use both transitioning types on the same scene, but I wanted to show you them both. Lastly, I'll show you how to crop your footage without any special presets or plug into a letterbox. It's a pretty simple technique that works effectively every time. Um, so we need to create another solid. So remember, remember Control Y, make sure that it's the size of the composition and set its color to pure black. Click OK. Now select this layer, hit Control D to duplicate it, and go into this duplicate solid settings. And the keyboard shortcut for that is Control Shift Y. Make sure that it's set to use square pixels and set its width and height to the ratio that you want your image to be cropped to. In this case, I use a 185 ratio. So set the width to 185 pixels and set the height to just 100 pixels and click New. And with this new solid selected, hit the continuously rasterize switch to turn it into a vectorized object rather than a solid with a set number of pixels. And right click the layer, go up to Transform and choose Fit to Comp Width. Now where it is right now represents where our cropped footage will end up being. So now we need to just set the first solid to use uh, the duplicate as an alpha inverted mat. Once we set this, we will have our letterbox. And you may want to reposition your footage to fill the new frame better. Just start dragging it up or down and hold on shift to lock it in the vertical direction. And that's all there is to it. I hit the zero key on the keyboard and we can see our wonderful cinematic sequence. If you've learned something or at least found this tutorial interesting, I'd appreciate it if you'd visit my site, videoapex.blogspot.com, as you can see on your screen, and leave a comment, ask a question, or vote on the two polls I have on the right-hand side. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on creativecrowd.net and have learned cool new ways to use the t these techniques I demonstrated to enhance your next project. Once again, this is Grant Swanson, Visual Effects Supervisor of Video Apex with creativecrow.net.